Good morning, everyone, and welcome to UMBC's Spring 2021 Graduate School Commencement Ceremony. We will begin shortly and would like to make you aware of some presentation features. Please note that you can feel free to make comments and send congratulations via the comment section available on both YouTube and Facebook. We invite you to continue the celebration after the event. There are additional videos available on the web page, including the individual graduate slides, many of which have wonderful photos, a copy of the commencement program, and tools to celebrate together on social. Please join me in welcoming our Grand Marshal, Dr. Orianne Smith. The 76th commencement exercises of the University of Maryland, Baltimore County will now be in order. I am Dr. Orianne Smith, President of the UMBC Faculty Senate and Associate Professor of English. As President of Faculty Senate, I serve as Grand Marshal of these proceedings. Note that I am carrying the university mace, a symbol of presidential authority. The tradition of the mace derives from medieval times in England when the mace was held by a bodyguard for dignitaries at ceremonial functions. Maces are used by governing bodies worldwide, including the U.S. House of Representatives and the British Parliament. Used only on formal academic occasions, it symbolizes the university's governing authority and is present only when the president is in attendance. At UMBC, the MACE is used exclusively at our yearly opening convocation and at our commencement ceremonies. UMBC's MACE was commissioned by the Alumni Association for UMBC's 20th anniversary in 1986. As we proceed with the ceremony, I want to add congratulations on behalf of all of my faculty colleagues. Enjoy the ceremony, graduates. We are so proud of your hard work and hope that you and your families enjoy this special day. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the Vice Provost and Dean of the Graduate School, Dr. Janet Rutledge. Dr. Rutledge has been the Dean for more than 10 years. She is also an Affiliate Research Professor in the Department of Computer Science and Electrical Engineering. Greetings. Today we come together to celebrate the achievements of our graduates. With or without the traditional ceremony, the conferral of master's and doctoral degrees is recognized around the world as signifying the highest standard of achievement in the disciplines, subjects, and professions sponsored by UMBC. This is one of life's happiest and most significant milestones for each of our graduates. It is a milestone not only for those earning degrees, but for all of us here today. It is a special moment during which we can witness the fruits of the many labors in our community and take pride in the remarkable work that takes place here at UMBC. The degree earned from UMBC reflects significant achievement often involving substantial personal sacrifice and struggle, for the pursuit of new knowledge and understanding involves growth and change. As we pay tribute to you today, we also acknowledge the faculty and staff who have encouraged, mentored, and inspired you to achieve your very best at UMBC. We recognize, too, those who have supported you during your studies at UMBC. We know how much your families and friends have provided throughout the experience. This is their day too. Those of you receiving degrees will transition from being students to being alumni. Whatever career pathway you choose, you represent the very best of the future. You have embarked on one of the most important journeys of your lives, and we are all very, very proud of you. President Rabowski has been reminding us to keep hope alive during this pandemic. I was reading an inspirational email earlier this week where hope was described as harvesting opportunities and possibilities every day. As we reflect on the meaning of this day and salute all that you've achieved, we also celebrate the commencement 
of all you have yet to achieve. So keep harvesting opportunities and possibilities every day, and you will be sure to achieve your dreams. Congratulations from all of us. On behalf of all the people of a proud state, I want to extend our most sincere congratulations to the class of 2021. When history looks back on this year's graduates, you will often be remembered for your earning your degree in the shadow of a global pandemic. Normal life came to a screeching halt over the past year and it forced all of us to pause and reflect on the things that truly matter. Staying apart from friends and family reminded us how much we depend on and need each other to get through the hard times. We were reminded that each day is precious and many of us vowed to never again take for granted the everyday parts of life. Fortunately, now we are so close to that light at the end of the tunnel when we can put this pandemic behind us. And while we know that we can never reclaim the time we've lost, I hope that as you graduate today, you remember that each of us can make the days ahead count that much more. Congratulations once again to each and every one of you and best wishes as you begin the next exciting chapter of your lives. Now we would like to welcome from the University System of Maryland Board of Regents, Robert Neal. Greetings. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to extend best wishes and congratulations from the University System of Maryland and the Board of Regents. I want to express my deep appreciation to all the leaders of UMBC, including Freeman Hrabowski, who continues to distinguish himself as a strong and dynamic leader for the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. I would go a bit further. Freeman is a Maryland State treasure. And to the outstanding faculty and staff at UMBC, under unimaginable circumstances, thanks to your collective vision, leadership, and hard work, UMBC continues to thrive as a vital institution of educational excellence and impactful service. To the graduates we celebrate today, let me say this. The past 14 months have been overwhelming in so many ways, but nothing can diminish the hard work, persistence, and dedication that have gotten each of you to where you are. In fact, the difficulty of the journey should serve to intensify the pride that you, your friends and family members take in reaching this milestone. And there may be some of you with family and friends that are no longer with us, but we know that they are here with you in spirit and are very proud of you. Nothing, not months of remote learning, not face coverings, not fiscal distancing, nothing can detract in the slightest from what you have achieved here at UMBC. The knowledge and experience you've received here that you have earned here are yours forever. I hope that you will take that knowledge and use it to help change the world, whether that is research, service, art, or activism. We need bright minds like yours to help us move towards a society that is healthier in body, mind, and spirit. Today, you have become an enduring part of UMBC's proud and impressive history. As someone who is rapidly approaching his use by date, I'd like to offer a little unsolicited advice. Work hard, but play hard. Balance your time and your life. No one lies in her deathbed wishing they had spent more time at the office. Once again, I offer each and every one of you a well-deserved congratulations. I speak for the entire University System of Maryland when I wish you all the best in years to come. Thank you. We now welcome Dr. Freeman Rabowski, president of UMBC. Serving for almost 30 years as president, Dr. Rabowski has brought tremendous energy and leadership to this institution. His vision of hope and focus on the path to excellence is more important today than ever before. He has helped connect the university and our graduates with individuals, companies, foundations, and agencies that have brought new resources to build and sustain distinctive programs in undergraduate education graduate education and research. We are delighted today to welcome Dr. Victoria D'Souza as our honorary degree recipient and commencement speaker. 
I met Dr. D'Souza when she was working on her PhD in biochemistry and structural biology in the lab of Professor Michael Summers. She also stayed there for her postdoctoral training. She aimed to understand how retroviruses package their genomes. This work to understand the fundamental operation of these retroviruses has the potential to lead to better drugs against retroviral pathogens, especially those linked to cancer. Born to a farming family in Goa, India, D'Souza initially focused on becoming a doctor, but found herself drawn to the promise of research science. She came to this country to work with Dr. Summers and to fulfill her dream of becoming a cancer researcher. Her research has been defined by perseverance. In 2004, she used nuclear magnetic resonance, NMR, to solve the largest RNA structure to date. It took her and Dr. Summers seven years to accomplish this, but it opened the door to a entirely new set of research questions and potential applications. The Souza has been a professor in the Department of Molecular and Cellular Biology at Harvard since 2006. She is now a full professor. She was the first UMBC alumna to be tenured at Harvard. Uh, she, her, her lab is a national leader in using advanced NMR methods to study large RNA and protein RNA, which will help an entire field gain insights that will be used in both basic scientific research, but also specialized research such as treating and curing cancer. Uh, D'Souza was a Damon Runyon Fellow and is currently HHMI faculty scholar. Like so many of our graduates, she has extended her work beyond science. She continues to be a strong advocate of promoting inclusion, and she supports research training uh, in such a way to help and mentor many students. She is a co-director of the Molecules, Cells, and Organelles graduate program at the Cambridge campus at Harvard, and she's involved in graduate training in the program in virology at the Harvard Medical School. Hello, everyone. Let me begin by thanking President Rabowski, our Dean's devoted faculty, especially from the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry, who taught me capable of this honor. My advisor, Dr. Michael Summers, without whom this moment would not be remotely possible. And most importantly, you, UMBC graduates, for giving me precious moments of your time before you begin a new chapter in your life. Congratulations, by the way. I applaud each one of you for deciding to pursue higher education to get to your dreams and aspirations. Getting to this day I know is not easy in any given normal year, and you have achieved this in the midst of a pandemic and major social weapons. You have navigated your academics through remote learning, and I'm sure many of you had to manage family obligations and personal hardships to get here. But here you are. Having persevered, if there is anything this class of 21 can teach us is that you are resilient and if you put your mind to it, no challenge is insurmountable. All of us, your mentors, the faculty, administrators, your friends, family, we all take tremendous pride in what we have achieved both individually and collectively. And what we see is a great promise for the future, not only for your own, but also your collective impact on society. So, we all know that this past year has been unusual, to say the least, filled with suffering and uncertainty. But as Helen Keller once said, although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of the overcoming of it. I have never seen this quote so aptly applied to our situation today. Who would have thought that COVID-19 pandemic would sweep through the globe and cause so much suffering? And despite being at the cutting edge of science, who would have predicted that we would be able to make vaccines within a year? So although you are graduating in a time where the world has seen one of the most disastrous events, you're also witnessing your education's power to get to the most brilliant of solutions to a problem. A little bit about myself. Neither of my parents had the opportunity to go to school. And because of that, they always taught my siblings and I to value our education and never once gave up working hard to afford that education. When all of us had left home, my mother in her fifties taught herself how to read and fluently. I have always wondered what she could have achieved if she had been given this opportunity. 
I found the same lessons of tenacity, resilience, and limitless opportunity here at UMBC. I not only benefited intellectually from the selfless mentoring I received from Mike and my colleagues, but also benefited emotionally from mentoring undergraduate students who helped me see my project through. I found a perfect world here at UMBC that strives both for intellectual and social growth. And I try to replicate that world wherever I am. Even a couple of years ago, I think it would have been easy for me to write the speech and give you little pieces of advice about how you could work towards bettering our society. However, the transformative events of the last few years and knowing my own students tells me that I don't need to do this. You are way more inclusive and sensitive to inequalities than we ever were. You are willing to listen to other perspectives and change. You already have a very good sense of what your world should look like. I truly believe the times have changed. In fact, we need to listen to you more to help you drive the societal changes you are looking for. So keep talking, take action, be in the driver's seat, and we and the world will eventually listen and follow along. Finally, always remember that ironically, there is only one constant in the world, and that is the passage of time. And our time in the world is limited, so make it count. Use the education UMBC has given you to follow your dreams, have a successful career, enjoy your family and friends, but also leave the world a better place and continue to be the giants whose shoulders the next generation will rest on. I wish you all the luck in the world. Be happy and stay safe. Thank you very much. Now we welcome Ms. Samantha Fries, President of the Graduate Student Association who was pursuing a Master of Arts degree in Applied Sociology. Ms. Fries received a Bachelor of Arts degree from UMBC in 2018. Hello, UMBC Class of 2021. As President of the Graduate Student Association, I am honored and immensely grateful to be here today to congratulate such an incredible group of students for your momentous achievement in completing your graduate degrees. As we all know, pursuing an advanced degree is no easy feat, but you all have done it. You're here. You have made it to the long awaited finish line at last. As I was writing these remarks, I thought back to that moment in time when I first accepted the offer to join my program here at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. I imagine that many of you felt the same feelings that I did. Excitement at the prospect of starting a new chapter in our lives. Apprehension about leaving behind the safety and comfort of the place we may have been before. Uncertainty as we did not yet fully understand what this journey was going to entail. Doubt that perhaps this was not the road we were meant to take. We felt these emotions at every turn. I remember my first day in a graduate course, sitting there with my nerves bubbling over, the imposter feeling setting in, my palms sweaty, hoping beyond all hope that I would be able to do this. Or the feeling of relief when it became clear that we weren't alone in experiencing these feelings. Or the excitement of a first presentation at a conference or having a journal publish our work. And now experiencing that flooding of elation and pride as we now look back at all those long hours in the lab or late nights staying up past everyone else asleep as you chipped away at your thesis or dissertation. The world has thrown us some serious challenges along the way that have forced us to reshape both our expectations and reality. We've experienced massive political divisiveness. We've seen horrendous acts of violence. We've lost friends and family, all while living through the biggest global health crisis of the past century. That being said, we have also seen great love 
compassion, and empathy demonstrated like never before in our lifetimes. Communities across the world have come together to support each other in our efforts for racial justice. We've seen incredible amounts of donations pour into food banks and relief efforts. We've seen family and friends find innovative ways to connect with one another using the incredible technology that has been engineered by people who once sat where you sit today. This magnificent outpouring of love and empathy has been demonstrated all across the world, but I'm most proud to say that I've seen it shown exceptionally and persistently by the students, staff, and faculty here at UMBC. Faculty restructured their courses to provide maximum flexibility. Staff worked long hours developing new ways to serve students and help them succeed online. Students created virtual networks to stay connected with one another and provide much needed support during a time where we all felt more isolated than ever before. Class of 2021, you are the most impressive, resilient, inspiring students that this world has ever seen. You have faced innumerable hurdles on both micro and macroscopic scales, and you have overcome them with something we like to call UMBC grit. In closing, I'd like to reference a quote from the book, The Empowered University, written by our very own distinguished president, Dr. Freeman Horowski. Progress is neither complete nor necessarily permanent. Progress can be undermined in a heartbeat, intentionally or unintentionally. We must be vigilant. The arc of history bends towards justice, but only if we work toward it and then make sure our progress is sustained. Success is never final. This may be the closing of a great chapter in your lives. And with the transition, many of those emotions we felt on day one might return. But let us not think of this as the ending of a chapter, but rather as the beginning of the next book in the series of our lives. Let us take the lessons we have learned throughout this unimaginable journey and continue to progress forward in both our own lives and in society. Remember the compassion that has been shown both to you and by you. Let us continue to support one another in times of both darkness and light. As Alex Riddle, former GSA president, who we unfortunately lost during this challenging year, was known to say, let us be kind to one another for the sake of kindness. On behalf of the Graduate Student Association, myself and the entire graduate student body, I am thrilled to congratulate you on this special day and wish you all the best in your future endeavors. I know you will do great things. Next, we will hear from UMBC's Provost and Senior Vice President, Dr. Philip Rouse, who serves as our Chief Academic Officer. Dr. Rouse joined UMBC in 1990. He is a professor in the Department of Physics and has served as Dean of the College of Natural and Mathematical Sciences. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the scholarly community we call our UMBC, I would like to extend my congratulations to all of our graduates today. We applaud your commitment to the highest forms of learning and scholarship and the hard work that has brought you to this singular and rewarding day. This ceremony reminds me of the words of G.K. Chesterton, who said, education is simply the soul of a society as it passes from one generation to another. So today we acknowledge not only your accomplishment, but also in some sense, the passing of the torch from one generation to the next. 
Today, each of you will join our community of UMBC alumni who dedicate their lives to making a difference by advancing our understanding of our own humanity, our democracy, and the natural world that surrounds us. Your achievement represents not just your academic accomplishments, but the friendships you've formed, the faculty of, that have nurtured you, and the family and friends who supported you and helped you arrive here today. So I hope you will see your achievement as emerging from within the context of a community, a community that knows you and cares about you. So as you look to the future, I believe that your fulfillment will derive from ma making the most of whatever talents have been bestowed upon you. And it lies in extending to the farthest limits the resources of your mind and of your heart. So in conclusion, I would like to leave you with my final salutation. May you enjoy a life rich in the knowledge that each day, your work and in your relationships, you have truly made a difference. Congratulations. Now we will hear from Mr. Brian Frazee, the president of the UMBC Alumni Association Board of Directors. He graduated from UMBC in 2011 with a bachelor's degree in political science, and again in 2012 with his master's degree in public policy. He is now the Vice President for Government Affairs with the Maryland Hospital Association. Good morning, class of 2021. My name is Brian Frazee, and I serve as President of the UMBC Alumni Association Board of Directors. Our board represents the alumni community at large, and you are joining a dynamic group of over 83,000 strong. Upon graduation today, you automatically become members of the UMBC Alumni Association. Campus resources will still be available to you in the future, including the UMBC Library and access to the Career Center. We recently launched a new effort called Retrievers Connect, which provides alumni and students the resources to make meaningful professional connections. Please be on the lookout for communications to stay connected to the UMBC family, including the UMBC Magazine, as well as the Retriever Roundup, our alumni newsletter. You all are entering the next chapter of your lives at an unprecedented time in our history, but UMBC is here for you and your fellow alumni are here for you, and we have no doubt that you will succeed in whatever path you choose to lead. Congratulations, class of 2021. We now welcome Dr. Freeman Rabowski, president of UMBC. Good morning. I am delighted to speak with you today. I begin with words from Eleanor Roosevelt. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Today, for you and for your families, represents dreams fulfilled. Congratulations to the class of 2021. You have made it. And so I want to talk a few minutes about this experience and about thanking other people. I began by saying that the longer I live, the more I realize there's nothing more important than our families and our friends. And we have to take the time to say thank you because we never make it to any point of achievement alone. There are always people helping us out. So I want you to look to your left and your right and thank your family members who are all around you on Zoom. And later on, thank others who may be at whatever small gathering you may be having. Um, some of you are watching the ceremony right now and thinking about the fact that you are surrounded by family members. I also want you to take a moment and reflect on what faculty and staff have done to support you in this journey and give them your own way, in your own way, some kind of applause. Uh, find ways to thank them for what they've done. And then let me acknowledge all of our campus leaders, including the VPs, vice presidents, and the deans and, and of our colleges and schools, and the other members of the President's Council, and our shared governance leaders who've guided us during this challenging period. Thank you to all of you, and to all of the colleagues on campus and students who've helped each other. You've already heard from Governor Hogan and from Regent Neal this morning. Uh, let's make sure we thank them. It's great to be in a state where public officials understand the importance of higher education. And similarly for the University System of Maryland and our Chancellor, Jay Perman, they all support UMBC, they and the Board of Regents. I know many of our graduates have family members who are UMBC alumni, 
Uh, you are all a part of that wonderful group that was mentioned by the UMBC Alumni Association Board of Directors, President Brian Frazee, earlier in the ceremony. We're very proud of you. We have staff members and, and family members of faculty and staff graduating today. Uh, congratulations to all of you. I'd also like to recognize those students graduating today who are veterans and members of the military. We appreciate you more than ever. Thank you for your service. And then I want to, to really celebrate also all of you who are going to become teachers and social workers and healthcare workers and, and entering public service in different ways, any kind of public service. You may be coming out of the arts, humanities, social sciences, or other disciplines and be doing just that. We thank you for serving for the public good. You are a very special class. You're graduating 51 years after the first graduation in 1970. Many people uh, in our country years ago who were a part of those groups in the 70s remembered what had happened to all of us in the 60s. Students, I graduated in 1970, and I remember being very frightened and having gone through the 60s where we had had everything from the assassination of our beloved President Kennedy to the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King and so much violence in different ways and what it all did, the Vietnam War, and we had had social protests for challenges, and all of us kept asking, in the midst of this activism, will we be okay? Will we be okay? And we did come out of it just as we will come out of the period we're experiencing right now. It's about our attitude towards adversity. It's about our, our saying we must speak the truth as we see it and be supportive of people who speak up for justice, for social justice. This is a time for moral leadership, and that's about our values of speaking the truth of believing in science, of coming together as a community to say what we can do to help each other. I want to talk about two of our alumni. We have alumni who are helping in this country and around the world from all the disciplines, from the doctors and the nurses and the healthcare workers to the researchers, the public health workers, the social workers, the teachers, uh, the lawyers, all who are doing, in many cases, public service, to the artists who are elevating us in all different types of ways. But I wanted just to share two examples that I've been talking about around the country. The first is Dr. Caitlin Sattler, who graduated in biology from UMBC, from Frederick, Maryland, and who's now an investigator uh, conducting a 10,000-person study on asymptomatic patients. She's leading the country in that. She's a graduate of UMBC, went on to Hopkins and then MIT, and um, she has an amazing TED Talk you must watch. And she's a leading scientist in the world. And the other is another young woman, uh, Dr. Kismikia Corbett, who has developed the Moderna COVID vaccine, but whose technology is also in Pfizer and some of the others. Uh, and the significance of her work, having come from North Carolina and come to UMBC and then on PhD from Chapel Hill and now NIH, is that she becomes the first black woman in the world to create a vaccine. So she has made history for all of us. And she will go into the faculty at Harvard uh, in immunology beginning in this fall. We are very proud of both of them. They're groundbreaking, so, but it's about the diversity of those scientists and young women and making a difference. Recently, I had the chance to talk with a small group of graduates of our graduate programs and to get their advice about what I should say to you. And, and I talked to three. One is Kieran Bailey, who is completing a master's in community leadership and will continue on uh, working at MSDE, Maryland State Department of Education, uh, with the Interagency Commission on School Construction. And Megan Lynch, uh, who is a master's, getting a master's in public policy and is staying on as an adjunct faculty at UMBC and also working with Cadenceville's Chamber of Commerce. And then Jim Kruger, PhD in public policy, uh, whose research is on solid waste management, working and planning to work with policymakers. And you could see that if you have to, if you really want to be thrilled to see the passion of Jim Kruger talking about solid waste management, very impressive. They all had amazing stories. They all talked about things that we should all be considering, everything from appreciating all the different identities of people here, whether it's about race, gender, age, LGBTQ, coming from different parts of the world. They talked about the fact that everyone has had to deal with uncertainty and had to position oneself to get through these challenges, that it's important to enjoy this moment and see it as a part of the journey. Uh, I, I was especially impressed by Jim Kruger, who is earning his PhD at 71 years old. 
uh, having been a plumber in his early life and then having his own company and then just being intellectually curious and getting a master's and then a PhD from here. It's the, it's the most important message that we should never stop learning. Uh, and what I would say to you, and he talks about perseverance, which is so important. And he even talks about um, the, the name of a rover that went to Mars uh, with NASA and just the idea of perseverance. And so there's a message to all of you to continue to persevere, to keep that grit that we talk about, to remain intellectually curious, to know you can make a big difference, that of those whom much is given, much is required. We are so proud of all of you. It has been my tradition at commencements to quote the words of UMBC's first president, the late Dr. Alvin Kuhn, as I talked to the first graduating class and as he talked to the graduating class of 1970. He said this, if you bring to the future the same personal qualities and personal commitment you have brought to this campus as students, good and important things will happen to each of you and to those around you, and the university community will be proud to have played a part in your life. And now let me give you my own words, and they are that your thoughts and your words and your actions will define not only who you are today, but who you will be in the future. Be confident knowing that the education you've received here has prepared you to continue learning. It's given you a solid foundation for the rest of your lives. Know that if you persevere, and we know you will, you will reach your goals, though you are certain to be challenged in the future as you've been challenged in this last period. But remember that your dreams and most important, your character will define who you will become. And your character will be reflected most clearly in the courage you possess and in the compassion that you show for others. Be true to yourself and true in your relationships and always reaching out to inspire and to elevate. Just know that we are so proud of each of you and of what you've accomplished. And so I am delighted to say to you that you are now officially members of the class of 2021 as alumni. You may now turn your tassels. Congratulations to all of you. Treasure.